fully aware of that. I'm fully aware of that. And that's why we had a Royal Commission, uh, and that's why we've implemented the findings of that Royal Commission, and that's why we have taken responsibility for what went on, even though I was not the leader of our state at the time. Uh, I take responsibility to make sure that it doesn't happen again. We, we seem to be rather confusing the fact that this government has done everything possible to prevent this from happening again with the independent nature of prosecutorial decision making. I just again, it's not, you're here to ask me questions, but if I could, if I could be permitted one to you, do you really want a situation where the Premier of the day or any member of the executive is essentially interfering, directing the Director of Public Prosecutions about who should be charged and with what. Like, I don't think we would ever want to get into that circumstance. And we want. That's where we leave Daniel Andrews because he has moved on to other things. But the big announcement this morning that uh, he has been talking about and he announced after we foreshadow it here on AM Agenda is that the Commonwealth Games is going to be cancelled in Victoria. There are no circumstances in which they are going to be held, not in regional Victoria, not even in Melbourne. The reason, well, Daniel Andrews said the cost blowout was just too much. It was going to be $2.6 billion, a reasonable cost, his inference. Now he's estimating that it will cost upwards of $6 billion or $7 billion to host a 12-day event. His line, that that money cannot be ripped out of schools and hospitals to pay for a 12-day sporting event. There's lots to get through, lots to unpick here about these uh, claims and why it is so expensive. I want to bring in now former professional tennis player and Liberal MP, Sam Groth. Sam Groth, thanks so much for your time. First of all, your reaction. Uh, well, good morning, Laura. My first reaction is, well, what a disappointment, both for the state, but especially for those regional cities and communities that were promised the Commonwealth Games, promised before the election as an election commitment from this government that they would deliver the legacy and infrastructure for regional areas they were crying out for. And now this announcement this morning that these communities, well, will apparently still get all the infrastructure, but delivered at less of a cost. I mean, I just don't understand how the Victorian people can cop what Daniel Andrews is currently selling them. It's another lie. It's another back down. It's another failure from this government. Yeah, let's talk about that regional package for a moment, because he's saying that all those upgrades will still happen in regional, regional Victoria. But he's saying, well, we can't guarantee it'll happen by 2026, though. So now we don't really have a timeline. Um, the money will still be spent. Do you have confidence that's actually going to happen, given this announcement today? I have zero confidence in the Victorian people should have zero confidence in this government to be able to deliver anything that they promised. They told us all in November that we could have it all. We could have infrastructure. We could have health. We could have the Com Games. Now they're slowly pulling back, pulling back, pulling back. I mean, they were, they, they'd mapped out $2.6 billion for the Commonwealth Games to deliver the event. Now it's down to $2 billion. So there's $600 million gone straight away. Mm. And my question is, if they're still going to deliver all the infrastructure and legacy that they promised in the lead up to the Games, how do they convince us that there was another $4 billion to be spent on the delivery of the Games? Those numbers to me don't make any sense. If you're still going to deliver all of the infrastructure, how has the cost gone up that dramatically? And I think the other point to make is they announced $1 billion for 1,300 homes in these areas. I mean, that's a cost of nearly $770,000 per home. I mean, surely that is not a confident... <laughs> that's a great point doing the job of the numbers from this government. I mean, I, I just don't know how they've got any credibility. And to be honest, we are supposed to be the leader in this country and one of the leaders in the world at deliver delivering global events. I mean, this is an embarrassment for the state that we are in such a financially poor situation that three years out from the Commonwealth Games, we're calling quits. Yep, uh, fair enough. But Daniel Andrews certainly has a following in Victoria. He's popular. He's just been re-elected. One thing that we need to consider here is what he's saying this morning is actually going to resonate with some voters. His line is, we can't pay for this 12-day sporting event by ripping money out of hospitals and schools. Well, that's not exactly how you manage a budget. But the thing here is, the question needs to be asked, doesn't it, Sam, as to why 
on earth would it cost near seven billion dollars i just looked at what birmingham cost england in 2022 and that was just 1.5 billion dollars why is it so expensive in victoria in the first place well that's a question that we're going to have to get to the bottom of but i think when you're coming out to make a cancellation announcement, I think throwing a figure out of six or seven billion dollars seems somewhat convenient, if you ask me. I mean, it's very easy to say it's going to cost that much and convince the Victorian people that, well, if we go ahead with this, it's going to cost you another three and a half billion on top of our own numbers. It's the government's own numbers. Nobody else told the government what was this, going, this was going to cost. They said it was going to cost two point six billion. They weren't told by the Commonwealth Games Federation or local councils or anybody else. These, these are their numbers that they've been running with from day dot. Now, mm. somewhat convenient, I would think, that they throw that six or seven billion. It was six billion when he started. It was seven billion dollars within three sentences. I mean, there's no firm fixed number there from the Premier anyway. But I think that we really need to start to question where this government is going, what its plans are, what is coming next in terms of cuts. And you've got to remember, the state budget was only delivered less than two months ago. And in that, there was already cuts to health. There was already extra taxes on schools. Sure. There was already extra taxes on property that are being handed on to renters. I mean, we're the highest taxing state in the nation. The costs are going up. This, this government knew the state of its budget and it still continued on. The fact that they are now talking about the Commonwealth Games would have to pull money out of these other areas. The mm. government is already ripping money out of these areas, not because of the Commonwealth Games, but because of its own incompetence. And yes, there is a lot of people that still support Daniel Andrews, but I say now is the time to wake up. It is time to start to realise that they can't deliver everything that they are promising. You can't have it all when the state of the budget is the way it is. Yeah. And it's our job as an opposition now to continue to point that out. But we will stand with those people in regional Victoria Good. who have promised the legacy of the Commonwealth Games. And you've got to remember, seats and areas like Geelong and Ballarat and Bendigo are mm -hmm. all Labor-held seats. All the people in those communities, if they now feel they are missing out, should be marching down to their local MP's office and banging on the door and demanding answers.